Hi, good evening. I'm Dr. Philip McMillan. Thank you very much for joining me. And today I'm going to be talking about a prediction that I made from January 2022 about an explosion in cancer cases. It's not often that with a degree of sadness, you feel as though what you had said turns out to be right. One of the difficulties is predicting when that right may be. And this is one of them that I think I'm feeling very sad about because I'm not sure what we can do at this point without scientific acknowledgement of a problem. Now, I've been talking about autoimmunity in the context of COVID-19 since early 2020. As far as I'm concerned, if you don't have a clear understanding about the primary pathophysiology in the disease, nothing makes sense. And so I've been able to use that paradigm of autoimmunity to be able to not only understand the disease, but predict what is going to happen next. And so today what I'll be going through is essentially a few of those points around why I think this is occurring. I'll be looking at an upcoming presentation that I'm going to be doing next week. And if you're interested, please register for it. It's just gone live. And I'll be looking at the potential mechanisms. The link is in the description. And it will, as usual, be a live presentation, which I'll then break up into a course. So if you want to see it for free, please join the webinar for next week, Thursday. The draft agenda can be complex, but as I said, ACE2 autoimmunity is a big part of what I'm focused on. There's interferon suppression, there's P53, there's SV40. There are a number of other things that could be quite relevant in the context of understanding the mechanisms as to why this is occurring. One of the things that I'm not allowed to talk about, but for people who follow me regularly, they will realize that one of the reasons that we don't want to acknowledge is an elephant in the room. And if you can't see in full screen, you can see that I've tried to demonstrate the point in the trunk of the elephant to make sure that you get where I'm going. There doesn't seem to be a desire from the scientific community to acknowledge this potential. And as such, it makes it even more difficult to make any sense of what is going on. Critically, one of the reasons why I think it's so important for us to acknowledge is because without acknowledgement, there is no opportunity for mitigation. Because if you don't understand the mechanisms, how can you do anything about it? So just uh, quickly going through a few points today that I think are quite relevant in terms of understanding what was going on. So when I was seeing the news, I started to reflect on where I was getting some information. So I went to Cancer Research UK, and they were talking about the cancer waiting times, the latest analysis and updates. And I thought that I would try and look at that to try and get a better understanding as to what could be happening in real time for patients across the country in the UK. My suspicion is that this is important, not just for the UK, but for many other countries across the world. The work that they are doing, I'd like to highlight that they need support. And it's wise for everyone, especially in these days, to be supporting research, because I think it's going to become more and more relevant to all of us in the near future. So, As we think about um, what I then focused on, I then went and took a quick look at some of their diagnostic activity and the waiting times that they had. So this is where I looked and the link is in the description. So I was looking at their cancer waiting times and the diagnostic activity data hub because I wanted to try and get some real time statistics about what is going on. Uh, People are talking about numbers are up, but oftentimes that's not necessarily very clearly delineated. So I got that, and then out of that information, I was able to pull this bit of information. And this is just showing you a trend 
and you can see it here. And they were looking in this case at the number of patients receiving a first definitive treatment for cancer following an urgent suspected cancer referral. And they were looking at the total number of patients in blue and the proportion treated within 62 days just to see whether or not we are reaching targets. And you can see the line in red is going down. But what I was interested in was total numbers going from January 2020 to August 2023. That was the bit that really interested me because I realized that's real-time data to try and look at numbers that are occurring across the UK and potentially in other parts of the world. This will need some research. So we appreciate the fact that the data is easily accessible. Within that, I then went and took some of the data and put it together in a file. And as I'll show you here again, for each month here is a total number of cases that were uh, diagnosed or treated. And so I used these total numbers to then see if I could get a trend. It's not perfect but it gave me an idea as to the overall trend of what was happening over the past three years. This is what I did. I put it together in this file, uh, in, this, in this table, so that you can see it um, a bit more clearly. I basically broke it down January, February, March, April, May, June, July, August. I stopped in August because we only had figures up to August 2023. So I was interested in the trend of these months from January to August. In light blue first is 2020, then 2021, then 2022, and then 2023 in dark blue here. And you can see the trend here. Dark blue, which is 2023, is higher than 2021, 22 in January. It's higher in February. It's higher in March. It's about the same in April, about the same as 2022 in May, higher in June, higher in July, higher in August. This is a significant trend across the period of time. Now, 2020 is the period of the pandemic. So you can imagine people weren't coming in for their diagnostic uh, investigations. But in 2021, if there was an issue with regards to people missing that, that's when you would have seen the cancer cases surging, possibly a little bit into 2022. But what could explain 2023, which is what we're seeing here? That's the bit that's standing out as to the trend that we need to be able to understand. As I said, there are many factors that could contribute to this. But the one big one that I'm really, really worried about is the elephant in the room. And the elephant in the room, as I said, without an acknowledgement that it could be a part of the process, means that we'll not be looking for mechanisms that could in interfere or stop that trajectory over the next few years. And so it's very important for us to reflect carefully. Now, when I talk about macrophage uh, activation, and uh, that's the bit that in from an autoimmune point of view, and this brings me to the paper here, macrophage diversity enhances tumor progression and metastasis. And this is what, this is a paper from 2010, you know, so this was well known, and this was a very interesting paper at the time, over 5,000 citations, because they recognize that macrophages are potentially part of the reason why we have tumor progression and metastatic disease. And one of the things that I had predicted in my I'd Rather Be Wrong series here was that specific point about increased cases of metastatic cancer due to the elephant in the room. And that was because I anticipated um, macrophage activation as an, an integral part of what was going on. And so these are important points, important things to try and tease out. I can't say necessarily that is absolutely the reason, but it's what I predicted in January 2022. It, it's what seems to be happening at the moment. And autoimmunity, especially if it involves specific immune cells, can certainly be a factor 
to lead to an explosion in cancer cases. One of the difficulties with talking about this is that I'm genuinely not sure what we can do, even if this turns out to be correct, other than trying to screen earlier and looking harder. One of the problems, though, is that if we see what appears to be part of the challenge with regards to metastatic cancer, and this is an image from another paper showing the ways how macrophages can have an impact in terms of tumors, they can suppress them, they can lead to inflammation, neoangiogenesis, which is new um, blood, cells, um, cells, uh, blood, blood vessels being formed, and critically, metastatic disease. And metastatic disease, if, if it promotes this bit, this is a real problem from a clinical point of view because metastatic disease means that the disease has already spread from the primary site of infection. And therefore, you have very little opportunity to, to mitigate this cancer because the only options are oftentimes chemotherapy, sometimes radiotherapy, and sometimes palliative intervention. So metastatic disease is the big problem in terms of cancer. And that's why we always try for early screening, early disease where it's localized and then can give more options for treatment. These are difficult times. But as I said, if you are interested in learning a little bit more about what I think could be the factors, not necessarily solutions other than early screening, but if you're interested in the science, please click on the link below and join me next Thursday as we go a little bit more detail. I can be a little bit more frank about elephants in the room and then hopefully we can have a better understanding of the science together. I hope this was of value to you and I look forward to speaking to you again in the near future. Have a great evening.